First off, I'm going to start off with the praise this morning because I thought my stomach hurt all night long when I got up this morning. I was telling Sue, you're going to have to take me to the emergency room in Las Vegas because I can't handle it no more. We got a hold of a friend of ours that lives in Michigan. I think it is Michigan. He's a nurse and a minister. He prays for people. And he called me up. He was at work, actually. But he called me up and prayed with me. And I just felt the Holy Spirit all over me. I just got hot and clammy. I mean, the Holy Spirit healed me this morning. And so I'm just giving him a praise Amen. that I don't have to go through that no more. Amen. It's, been, it's been several months. So... Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Woo, praise God. Uh, I got a little movie uh, presentation here. It, it's really funny. I didn't talk to the worship team, but all their songs were talking about what we're going to be talking about today. <laughs> and it's funny how that works. Even the Holy Spirit's in control. Even the prayers. Even the Holy Spirit's in control. Yes, yes. So... Okay. Do you know that we're in such a place in the body of Christ right now that people are calling good evil and evil good? Do you know if there's demonic doctrine out there that says you can do whatever you want and it's grace, hey, back off? And it's perverting the very truth of what godliness means. False grace slips in because there's no relationship there. And I'd rather tell you now than you go to hell for believing it later. We're listening to the devil. We're being manipulated by the liar. And God forbid you learn how to heal the sick. And heal the thing that's okay and sleep with your girlfriend. That's not okay. It doesn't say deny the devil, pick up your cross and follow him. The devil's not your problem, you are. It says deny yourself, what self has to do with your thinking. There's a way that seems right to a man, and it's killing us. I love you, but I can't stand what the devil's doing. He's a manipulator, he's a liar. He's finished, he's cut off, and he's trying to recreate himself in your soul. I believe that we can actually be holy as he is holy. I believe we can. I know my father's voice. He says, my sheep will obey my voice to strangers. They will not follow. There is a place in the love of God to live in a constant place of repentance every day to where my conscience remains soft, pure, clean, and holy.
what I want to talk about this morning is who we are in Christ and who we're supposed to be in Christ. And most of the time, that's one of the biggest things the devil does is he gets us focused off of that. Well, we're not thinking of who we're supposed to be and who God says we're supposed to be. And um, it took a while. I mean, let's say 40-something years, but it was only within the last 10 that we got a hold of this. And we started doing things like reciting different verses in the morning when we get up, when we go to bed, uh, we actually before we pray. And then on my phone, I have a little program that plays the Bible, and we just turn it on, put it between our heads and the pillows, and just go to sleep listening to the Scripture. And it's just really, really been awesome to do. But I'm not going to look up all these scriptures, but I'm going to give you the verses. You can look them up yourself, but I'm going to kind of paraphrase and give you what I think they're saying, okay? John 1, verse 12, that we are a child of God. We are actually his child. We need to remember that, that we are his, and, and, and he is ours. Romans 8, 16 through 17. We are joint heirs with Jesus. We share in his inheritance. That's part of ours. What he has, we have. The very power that, that rose Jesus from the dead dwells in us and dwells in you. If you're a believer, that's where it is. And we have that authority. That's another thing. The devil has ability. But we have authority and ability. And a, authority trumps ability anytime. 1 Corinthians 6.17 You are united with God and one spirit with him. We are one with him. 1 Corinthians 6.19-20 We are the temple of his spirit and a life lives in us. He's in us. He's here. And it's not, it's not, this is the thing. People think, okay, I'm saved now. I'll just hang out. The rapture comes and go to heaven. The, th the power that he's given us to live here on earth, to heal the sick, to raise the dead, to, 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 to heal the lepers, that's the same power that we have now. And it's for here. It's not, when we, we don't need it when we get to heaven. It's for using now. And that means that we, supposed to get out there on the street that's what I said when I spoke before about the juvenile center and stuff Jesus says go and it wasn't a request if we feel like it maybe once in a while he says go so that's a command and he's my Lord he's my king I need to go first uh, Corinthians 12 27 we are a member of the body of Christ he's the head and we are the body and when one part of the body suffers the rest of the body right. suffers too so when I look at it this way if I stay home from church part of the body is missing and that's important that the body comes together and stays together yeah, that's true. Ephesians 1 1 we are saints you ever think about that you need to look that word up saint what that actually means but God and Jesus calls us saints. It's not, we may not feel like we're a saint. We may not sometimes act like a saint. That doesn't change the fact that we are. Colossians 1.14, we are redeemed and forgiven. Not 99%, 100%. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow too. That doesn't mean we can just go out and do whatever we want to do because, oh, well, it's under the blood. It doesn't matter. No. One of the reasons why we do what we do is because of what he's done for us. Colossians 2.10. We are complete in Jesus Christ. We have, to, we have to remember that and think about that we are complete in him. We're not, we're not just, you know, crippled. We're not, we're not just sinners saved by grace. That's not true. We are redeemed 
we are saved and we are complete in Jesus Christ. That means there is no, that sinner saved by grace at one time we were, but now we're not. We are sons and daughters. The Bible doesn't say daughters, but it says sons. A lot of women get kind of bent on that one. But if you think about it, what do you think we feel like as guys when we have to refer to ourselves as the bride of Christ? <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyway, um, Romans 8, 1 and 2, we are free from condemnation. There's no more condemnation. If we start getting these feelings that oh, I'm not worthy, I'm not good, no, there is no more condemnation. We need to just cast that down, throw it away, and say that's that's not that's not me. That's not who I am. That's not what Jesus paid for on the cross. Right. It's for us to walk around like half Christians. It doesn't work that way. You either are or you aren't. That was another thing too. When Jesus was whipped, they whipped him with a cat of nine tails, and a cat of nine tails has it wasn't just pieces of leather. It was pieces of bone and metal tied on the end of each pieces of that leather that we were whipped with. And he was whipped, well, we were too. He was whipped with. And that right there, that part of the atonement is what pays for our healing. Jesus said that healing is the children's bread. We need to sit down at the table and take a big bite because that's for us. And I just experienced that this morning when God healed me this morning. Um, Second Colossians, or Corinthians, excuse me, 5.17. We are a new creation because we are in Christ. Not because of something we've done. That's what the whole significance of baptism is too. When you go under the water, it's as if you're going into the grave with Jesus. When you come out of the water, you're a new creature in Christ and alive in Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 1, 21, 22. I am established, anointed, and sealed by God. He gives us the Holy Spirit. That's our seal to the day of redemption. That's, that's our, that's our, our um, what do you call it, earnest money. He put the money down and said, you're paid for already. Colossians 3, 12, we are chosen of God. We're holy and dearly loved. He refers to us as his beloved. I mean, that's what he called his son, and that's what he calls us, his beloved. Mm -hmm. And it, there was a time, uh, we don't do it as much as we used to, but we used to get up every morning and say, good morning, God. Good morning, Jesus. Good morning, Holy Spirit. This is your beloved thorn spirit. He's ready for another day. And that's how we'd start out. Anyway, 2 Timothy 1 and 7. I do not have the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. Ephesians 2, 6. We are actually seated in the heavenlies. Spiritually, we're sitting right up there with Jesus. And that's, that's, that is a, a very... To imagine that so there's times when okay so when so when I was hurting so bad I would tell Jesus okay my spirit is seated in the heavenlies my spirit is perfect it's not it's not my spirit's not hurting so I need to tell my body and my mind to get in line with my spirit that's already in the heavenlies seated with beside Jesus um, Ephesians 2 I think it's 18 I, said, I put 118 but I don't think that's right but anyway uh, we have direct access to God we talked about it in the music this morning about the, the veil being torn in two do you know the veil was like a foot thick material this wasn't just like some bed sheet hanging up there this was like foot thick and it was torn from top to bottom when Jesus died on the cross. That gave us access to the Father. Mm -hmm. Second Peter 1 and 4, I have been given exceedingly great and precious promises by God by which I share his nature. We, we, we have his nature, 
And we need to walk in that. Hebrews 13, 5. I can always know the presence of God because he never leaves me. He said he would never leave us nor forsake us. He's always with us. So we can always have that. Philippians 2, 13. God works in me to help to do the things that he wants me to do. James 1 and 5. I can ask God for wisdom and he will give it to me and everything I need. We simply need to choose to do what God says to do and to believe what he says who we are. Okay, this is a little, little thing I copied down. Who you are in Christ. You are not just an ordinary person. You are a child of the living God. You are the heir of God and joint heirs with Jesus. You're not just a sinner. You're a new creation in Jesus. You're part of the chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation. You are one of God's chosen people. This, uh, out all the rest of this has been in the New Testament, but there's a verse in Amos 3.3. 3. And what it says is, how can two walk together unless they agree? That's very important. We need to know what God says about us and then get in agreement with that so we can walk with him together as one. So we have the very mind of Christ, not just our own ideas about things. I got a little, a few closing thoughts here. When we don't realize who we are in Christ, our faith will be crippled. If we don't feel worthy to exercise your authority in Christ, then you won't do it. And the fullness of the faith and will lack assurance. We're going to walk around not a, not, not not confident in what we're doing. Satan works diligently to program people's minds to feel unworthy, unable to walk in the power of God here on earth. This is one of the most popular strongholds in existence today in the body of Christ. The truth is that we, by our own power and effort, are unworthy. We don't have any power at all. It's like when I pray for someone that's sick and they get healed. I didn't heal them. He healed them. So that's really easy to heal people because I'm not doing it. Jesus is doing it. I'm not doing it. But it is the blood of Christ that makes us worthy. And if we say we are unworthy, when the blood says we are, then we are denying the work that Christ did for us on the cross. And then it goes right back to Amos 3, 3 again, is how can two walk together unless they agree? Amen. 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 Thank you, Father, for this day. Thank you for the healing this morning, Lord. We thank you for our time together. We thank you for this opportunity to recognize who we are in you and to learn to walk in that so that we will be effective here on earth. We are to bring heaven to earth. And so we won't need all this when we get there. But right now we do. So I thank you for this day and I bless the food that we're going to partake. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 <laughs>